Good evening, everyone out there in the virtual world. Thank you for joining us tonight, and I hope you're staying safe, warm, and dry on this wet and cold night. My name is Colleen Alfenbutt. I'm the Black Bear and Fur Bear Biologist for the Wildlife Resources Commission, and we wanted to provide this special presentation regarding the proposal to add three additional bear sanctuaries to our permit sanctuary hump program. Before I talk specifics, I wanted to provide you with a brief summary of where we were with black bears and where we are now in North Carolina. Back in the 1970s, bear populations were in trouble and they were declining. During that decade, there were less than 1,000 bears left in the Mountain Bear Management Unit, which comprises Western North Carolina. The top map you see in this slide shows in green where remnant bear populations still occurred in 1971 Mainly bears were in the remaining areas of Western North Carolina that still had decent bear habitat, such as Great Smoky Mountains National Park and the National Forests. Thanks to our efforts by 2005, the commission had increased the bear population in Western North Carolina 340%. And by 2010, bears were restored to almost the entirety of their historic range in the Mountain Bear Management Unit, as you can see in that bottom map on this slide. Now I'm happy to report that you, if you can tell, there's a little bit of white left as of 2010 in that map. That little bit of white has since then been filled in. So bears are back to the entirety of their range in Western North Carolina, and we're starting to see bears expand their range into the Piedmont region. We've also restored bears in Eastern North Carolina. Bears are a wildlife success story and one that we're proud of and that we hope all North Carolinians are also proud of. But with a restored and increasing bear population, coupled with a diverse and increasing human population and their associated development, the Commission recognized the need to change from restoration efforts to management efforts to assure the long-term viability of the bear population, as well as assure and maybe even increase acceptance and support for the restored bear population. To do so required developing a statewide black bear management plan. In the development of this plan, it included public input and a public comment period, and we also incorporated results from human dimension surveys that we conducted in 2005. At the time of those surveys, bear populations were restored in Western North Carolina, and the bear population was at an estimated 4,400 to 4,900 bears. At that time, the vast majority of the public not only supported regulated hunting as a bear population management tool, but a majority preferred the bear population remain at current levels, which again was at 44 to 4,900 bears. In addition, some actually preferred a decrease in the bear population. Only a minority wanted the bear population to continue to increase. Due to the recovered status of the bear population, coupled with the bear population that was increasing at 10 to 15% at the time, and with input from the public, the population objective for the Mountain Bear Management Unit bear population is to stabilize the size of the bear population by reducing population growth to 0%. To achieve this population objective, the Commission uses harvest management strategies, which is recognized as an important management instrument in our bear management plan. Regulated hunting has been successful in reducing bear population growth in the mountains from 15% now down to 5 to 6% but it has remained at this robust growth rate for the past few years. As a result, the estimated bear population has now almost doubled in size since 2005. Again, in 2005, bear populations were restored and the public told us they wanted the bear population to remain at those 2005 levels or maybe even decrease. But we have gone from 44 to 4,900 bears at that time to now having an estimated seven to 8,000 bears. One reason we have not been able to stabilize the bear population is that non-huntable areas in the mountains are increasing largely due to development. That leads us to North Carolina's bear sanctuary system established by the commission in 1971 back when bear populations were in decline, fragmented and isolated. Again, think back to that map I showed earlier uh, with the green splotches. In 1971, the commission established 28 black bear sanctuaries totaling over 800,000 acres. Hunting has always been part of the sanctuary system, with the original objective of the sanctuary being to protect a breeding nucleus of female bears, 
and to produce a dispersing surplus of bears that could be harvested without detriment to the population. These sanctuaries are not fenced in areas or national parks and regulated game hunting does occur on these lands already. Over the past five decades, the boundaries, acreage, and number of sanctuaries has changed in response to the increasing bear population, and in some cases due to a change in land ownership. We currently have 17 sanctuaries totaling approximately 490,000 acres in North Carolina. As bear populations were restored and then continued to grow, coupled with the decline in huntable land, the commission recognized that bear sanctuaries would continue to serve an important role in managing the mountain bear management unit's bear population. As stated in our bear management plan that again went through a public comment period, bear sanctuaries are delineated areas where hunting mortality can be adjusted independently from that of the surrounding area to address local bear densities and to meet population goals for bear management units. Adjustment of mortality is achieved by regulating harvest pressure, which can range from no hunting to a hunting season consistent with that of the local bear season. We've had permit bear hunts on bear sanctuaries for the past 16 years, when permit hunts were allowed on Mount Mitchell Bear Sanctuary in 2006. Three years later, we allowed bear permit hunts on Daniel Boone Bear Sanctuary. In summary, we are proposing to add these three sanctuaries to the other two sanctuaries that allow restricted bear permit hunting in order to help us meet population objectives to stabilize the population and get bear population growth down to 0% as identified in our bear management plan. Again, the bear population was restored years ago and since then has almost doubled since 2005. Allowing permit hunting on three additional sanctuaries would offset some of the loss of huntable lands that have occurred in the mountain bear management unit. In addition, research supported by our agency and conducted by the University of Tennessee Knoxville confirmed that there are high densities of bears occurring on sanctuaries, including Pisgah, Panther Town, and Standing Indian. This research also helped us confirm the continued robust growth rate of the bear population in Western North Carolina. As part of their integrative management approach to use regulated hunting, bear-wise education, and food storage requirements to address high bear densities and increasingly severe bear, bear conflicts, the Nantahala Ranger District requested a permit hunt on Panther Town. Lastly, permit hunts are highly regulated, differ than hunting that occurs off sanctuary on game lands and private lands, and permits can be changed based off bear population objectives. Also, these permit hunts must follow all relevant state laws and regulations, such as bag limits, minimum weight requirements, you need a bear stamp to hunt, mandatory to submission, and several other requirements. I have these websites shown and I encourage you to visit them. We provide a wealth of information on our website, including some of the reports I've mentioned here, such as the bear management plan and the bear annual report. The commission also knows that education and people changing their behavior to live responsibly with bears is important in the continued success of the bear population. While this proposal will aid us in meeting our bear population objective, we want to encourage all North Carolina citizens and tourists to keep bears wild and people safe by implementing the bear wise basics, which means not approaching bears and securing attractants such as bird feeders and trash cans. Many conflicts can be avoided or resolved, and we can keep bears from becoming human habituated and bold and aggressive by following the bear wise basics. To learn more about bears, the bear wise basics, how you can be bear wise and become a recognized bear wise community, I encourage you to visit these websites. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ashley Peckerel and I'm the regulatory analyst for the agency. Welcome to the public hearing of proposed changes to the 2022-2023 inland fishing, hunting, trapping, and game land regulations. I'll turn it over to our agency's executive director to begin the presentation of the annual cycle proposals. Good evening. My name is Cameron Ingram, executive director with the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission. Welcome to the 2022 North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission annual rule cycle public hearing for fishing, hunting, trapping, game lands, and other regulated activities proposals. Speaking on behalf of staff of the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission and the agency's 19-member Board of Commissioners, I would like to extend my gratitude to you 
for taking part in this virtual public hearing. In light of the pandemic, we once again had to shift away from in-person hearings for our annual rules cycle to this virtual format, and we appreciate your adaptability. The Wildlife Commission is a state regulatory agency responsible for enforcement of fishing, hunting, trapping, and boating laws, and provides programs and opportunities for wildlife-related educational, recreational, and sporting activities. The North Carolina General Assembly declares through state statutes which matters of fish, wildlife, and land management the Wildlife Commission can regulate through its rules. Before we begin the hearing, I want to emphasize how essential your active participation in this rulemaking process is. The Wildlife Commission considers all comments the same, whether they are submitted verbally during this virtual hearing or submitted by mail, email, or through the online comment portal at NorthCarolinaWildlife.org. Each of you participating tonight, help us understand your needs, concerns, and ideas as they pertain to these proposed rules. Staff compile all comments into a document that the commissioners review before deciding whether to adopt, amend, or reject the proposals. Thanks again for participating in this important process. The Commission appreciates your interest in the state's wildlife resources and respectfully considers all suggestions within its authority. At this point, I'm going to introduce the staff that will be presenting tonight in the order they'll be speaking, and then we'll go ahead and get started. First, we have Ashley Peckerel, Regulatory Analyst, Next will be Christian Waters, Chief of Inland Fisheries Division. Then we'll have Brad Howard, Chief of Wildlife Management Division, followed by Darren Barnes, the Program Manager of the Wildlife Interactions and Regulated Activities Permits Office. And lastly, Brian McCray, Chief of Land and Water Access Division. Thank you, Director Ingram. Before we get started tonight, I want to review just a few logistical items so everyone will know what to expect from this virtual hearing. All participants in this hearing are currently muted and will remain muted throughout the hearing. The chat function has been disabled, but you can send us a message through Q&A if you are having issues or technical difficulties. We just ask that you don't submit comments through the Q&A tonight. If you would like to submit a written comment tonight or at any time, this can be submitted either to our regulations email or in the public comment portal, and that information can be found on our webpage. Verbal comments will be received periodically throughout the hearing, and I will review how to comment at those times for people who wish to do so. At this point, I'm going to hand things over to Christian Waters to start us off with proposed changes to the inland fishing regulations. Good evening. I'm Christian Waters, Chief of the Inland Fisheries Division for the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission. This evening, I will be presenting the inland fishing proposals we have six proposals total, five deal with trout in our mountain region, and one deals with striped bass. For our first trout proposal, F1, it will clarify the boundaries of catch and release artificial flies and lures only trout waters on the Tuckasegee River in Jackson County. The proposal will not add or remove any public mountain trout waters. F2 reclassifies the following waters from wild trout waters natural bait to wild trout waters. Of North Shoal Creek in Cherokee County, Deep Creek in Graham County, the game lands portion of Lower Fowler Creek in Jackson County, the game lands portion of Jarrett Creek in Macon County, and the game lands portion of Overflow Creek in Macon County. F3 will modify the lower boundary of hatchery supported trout waters on Spring Creek in Madison County. The proposed reach will be from the junction of NC 209 and NC 63 to the confluence of Meadow Fork. The proposal will remove 0.9 miles from public mountain trout waters. F4 will modify the upper boundary of delayed harvest trout waters on Helton Creek in Ash County. The proposed reach will be from 900 yards upstream of State Road 1372 Bridge to the North Fork New River. This proposal will add approximately 0.5 miles to public mountain trout waters. F5 will modify the upper boundary of hatchery supported trout waters on the Limble River in Avery County. 
The proposed reach will be from State Road 1504 to the Blue Ridge Parkway boundary line, except where posted against trespassing. This change will remove approximately 0.5 miles of public mountain trout waters. Our final proposal is for striped bass. F6 will increase the minimum size limit for striped bass and its hybrids from 16 inches to 20 inches in Lake Norman. The daily creel limit will remain four fish in combination. And that concludes our inland fishing proposals. Thank you, Christian. Before I open the floor for comments on inland fishing proposals, I'm going to review some methods for participating and let you know how we intend to manage this portion of the hearing. If you are logged into this hearing with your computer or smartphone and would like to comment, you will use the raise hand function. If you called into the hearing on the phone, you can raise your hand by pressing star nine. Once you raise your hand, you'll be automatically pasted in the queue and we'll know that you would like to speak. For those folks who have raised their hands, I will call your name or the last four digits of your phone number for those who are calling in and we will unmute you. Once we do that, you'll receive a prompt to unmute yourself and you'll be able to speak. We do ask that when you are unmuted, you please keep your comment respectful and to no more than two minutes. So we have time to allow all attendees who wish to speak an opportunity to do so. Once you are finished making your comment, we will mute you again and lower your hand. This process will be the same after each division's proposals are presented. At this time, will we begin accepting comments on the proposed inland fishing regulations? Just as, Just, a a Just as a reminder, if you have any questions, you can submit them in the Q&A. And if you would like to make a specific comment related to a specific proposal, please wait until that proposal is brought up and raise your hand and then I will call on you. So first we have Samuel Bevington. Hello, uh, I just wanted to make sure uh, we we're talking about tag use tonight as well. That was it. Yes, we will be talking about tegus in our wildlife management section. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I know it wasn't related. I just wanted to, I didn't want to sit through this whole thing, find out they weren't discussed. Sorry about that. Thank you. Next, we have Donald Reed. Yeah, the question. Excuse me, Donald. Oh, sorry. Are the populations on the trout regulation sustainable populations or just why why is the why is the change being made, especially in Madison County? Christian, do you want to go ahead and address that? Sure. Um, yes, uh, those those populations are are sustainable. Uh, the ones that are wild waters, uh, the others. Uh, several of the changes that we were making are um, hatchery supported waters where we we stock the fish specifically. Uh, I'm aware of that. So are you, are you stopping the stocking because what's there has been sustainable or? No, I'm sorry. Those that the one in Madison County, I think you're referring to F3. Uh, that one is being removed. Um, simply because the landowner um, was is no longer allowing access. Uh, it's being posted against trespass. So we'll continue to, to stock the other portions of the stream. We just won't stock the portion that that landowner, um, uh, which is adjacent to his property. Okay, cool. That makes sense. Thanks. Last four digits of a phone number, 6631. Hi, I wanted to ask a question relating to the um, bear hunt specifically. I know um, the wildlife management um, individual me, indicated. Ma'am. Hello? We will be addressing that under our game land proposals, which will be coming up shortly. Oh, okay, thank you. 
Thanks. Are there any other comments which should be made on inland fishing proposals? All right, it looks like there are no more comments on inland fishing regulations. So next we will hear from Brad Howard with proposed changes to wildlife management regulations. Good evening. I'm Brad Howard, Wildlife Management Division Chief, and I'm gonna be presenting the wildlife management proposals. We have eight proposals to present for you tonight. The first proposal, H1, is a migratory game bird proposal. Uh, this proposal has three parts. The first part, it allows crippled waterfowl to be taken from a motorboat under power in those areas described, delineated, and designated as special sea duct areas. Uh, the purpose of this change is to make us uh, consistent with the new federal rules. Uh, the second part is to eliminate the habitat enhancement program that established posted waterfowl management areas by the WRC for Canada goose and duck restoration. Those no longer exist, so there's no purpose for them being in rule. And the third part is to remove the word experimental from the September teal seasons as the season is no longer experimental. It is established and has been for a while. Wildlife proposal number two, H2, is concerning exotic species. It will add the tegu lizard and greenhouse tree frog uh, as exotic species that are unlawful to possess, import, sell, release, et cetera, into North Carolina. Proposal H3 uh, deals with the collection, possession, and commercial take, primarily of reptiles and amphibians. Um, this will modify the current uh, pos possession of four reptiles and 24 uh, amphibians and change it from no more than four reptile species and 24 amphibian species per physical address. Uh, it'll also make some changes to the collection license regarding snapping turtles. It will add certain requirements for snapping turtles and create a collection license specifically for snapping turtles. The season for collecting snapping turtles will be from June 1st through September 30th. Uh, individuals can collect no more than 10 turtles per physical address per day and no more than 100 snapping turtles per physical address per season. There will be a 13 inch size limit and certain specifications around the trapping devices and limits the snapping turtle collection license to North Carolina residents only. Additionally, it separates and defines scientific collection permits, educational collection permits, and snapping turtle collection permits. It clarifies that those licenses may not be transferred and, and it aligns the possession permits with four, the 424 rules and it aligns the 13 inch size limit rules. The fourth proposal also involves importation of, and native reptiles and amphibians and it adds reptiles and amphibians to the list of animals prohibited to import without a permit from the WRC. This just makes the importation of native reptile and amphibian species consistent with birds and mammals across the state. It also removes language regarding surveyed importation because those rules are now in the North Carolina Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services rules. The next proposal, H5, is a deer proposal. It removes the Western black powder either sex restriction line from rule and links the black powder either sex restri restrictions to the, for a county to the corresponding either sex gun seasons for that county. For example, if a county has no either sex gun day in their regular firearm season, then the either sex season for the black powder season would be the first Saturday of the black powder season. Uh, conversely, if that county has the conservative either sex season, then all open days of the black powder season would be either sex. That's the same for the moderate and the maximum. The introductory season is, is the big change here where if a county has uh, the introductory either sex season, then their season would be the opening day through the following Saturday of back black powder season. So it would add some either sex hunting in those counties during the black powder season. The next two proposals, proposal H6 and H7, involve squirrels and raccoons. H6 will allow for a spring gray squirrel season. It will be 14 days in duration. It'll open the second Monday in May, which is just after turkey season goes out. It will be on private land only and there'll be a daily limit of eight squirrels. Our biological staff has examined the season. This is an appropriate time biologically to harvest squirrels. 
Uh, it is similar to the same time as we harvest squirrels in the fall in terms of the squirrels reproductive cycles. So this is an opportunity to get a little bit of squirrel hunting in uh, in late May before it gets too hot. The second proposal is about raccoons and this H7 will consolidate the raccoon and opossum hunting regulations into one rule and it'll remove the restriction on hunting raccoons during the daylight hours west of US-1. There's really no biological reason uh, to, to have that restriction in place. Uh, raccoon populations are well established across the state and an opening opportunity for daylight hour hunting is perfectly uh, sound biologically. Proposal 8 revolves tagging of fur bearing species and specifically the CITES tags that are required for certain species, otters and bobcats. It'll remove the fee that is currently charged for otters and bobcats uh, upon the request of a tag from the commission. Uh, it sets limits on how many tags may be requested per request. Um, and it changes the placement of rule text that states how foxes should be tagged and their carcasses or pelts lawfully tagged and sold to another. It moves it to another rule. Those are the wildlife management proposals. Thank you for your attention this evening and now we'll open it up to the comment. Thank you, Brad. Before I open the floor for comments on wildlife management proposals, I'll just remind you that if you wish to speak, you will need to raise your hand on your computer or smartphone. That will be the raised hand function. And if you are calling in on your phone, you can press star nine. When I call your name or the last four digits of your phone number, you will be unmuted and receive a prompt to unmute yourself and then you can make your comment. Please keep your comments to no more than two minutes. Use the Q&A function for any technical difficulties that you may be having. Adam Hamblin. Dante Sparta. Talina Chavez. Uh, yes, hello. Uh, I had a question regarding H4. Uh, the native reptiles and amphibians importation. Uh, how is native to be determined? Will there be a species list? Um, that, that was one of my, my questions, that and the process of getting the permit. Oh, did I not? Can y'all hear me? I'm sorry. So Native native would be a species that occurs naturally in the wild here in North Carolina. So that's what we would consider to be a native species. So even a, a, a captive bred, uh, let's say yes. corn snake from, would be on that list, even if it was Correct. captive bred Correct. elsewhere. Regardless of, regardless of where it came from, whether it was captive bred or came from another state, if it is a species that occurs here naturally in North Carolina, it is considered native. Uh, and the permit, you could get the permit. If you go to our website, we have a link to where you can apply for that permit um, on our website. And that does not affect folks who currently own these animals. This is strictly about importation. Is that correct and not possession? Yes, in this particular rule, it is about importation. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Phone number ending in 6327. Number 6327. Hello, could everyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, great, great. I'll try to keep it down to two minutes. So my name is uh, Josh Ortiz, and I had, I guess, questions and comments regarding the, regarding the Tegu ban. So it's, it seems like it's pretty, uh, like a broad scope. I noticed that it includes um, species that have no invasive potential, such as Colombian Tegus, which are tropical equatorial species that do not hibernate. So obviously they cannot live in North Carolina. It includes uh, red Tegus, which are not, you know, they're not that cold tolerant. They don't even have invasive uh, populations, even in Florida. So it seems like, I mean, that should be pretty much just black and white tegus. I mean, that's the only 
invasive population. I know they have similar names and sometimes people get confused, but it's, it's kind of like saying that, you know, different canines, for example, like a coyote, a domesticated dog or a fox are the same thing. They may look similar um, and they may all be canines, but they're all quite different, actually. So I'm not sure if that's some sort of error that just hasn't been approached yet or if that wasn't considered. So could someone comment on that? And then in addition to that, before, let me add to that point. For Salvatore Marinade, there's actually been papers, uh, such, as, such as in Nature Journal, uh, stating that basically the entire state of North Carolina has almost zero invasive potential for that particular species. So I guess it's a two-part question. Why does it include all, all the species, including ones that have no invasive potential? One. And then two, uh, Salvatore Marinade, which does have invasive potential in other warmer states, um, is, is on there, which, which is also puzzling. So if someone could comment on that, I'd appreciate it. We don't have time to address all of those comments, but thank you. They will be noted in public record. We will take that under advisement. Thank you again. Adam Hamblin. Tyler Ross. Yes, hi, this is Luke Weingarten, the chair of the North Carolina chapter of Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. I wanted to address uh, proposal H6 for the spring squirrel season. Uh, while we support the spring squirrel season, what we can't understand and um, strongly recommend against is private land only open for that squirrel season. Um, so any comments we would take, but uh, the comments that we're submitting is, uh, is to open that squirrel season across North Carolina, including public land. And if a choice must be made, then uh, public land is, is where we recommend that squirrel season be open. Thank you for your time. We appreciate your work. Thank you, Tyler. We have Leroy Juiced. Yes, thank you. This is Leroy Yosta. I would like to know in H6, if the white squirrels are excluded from this particular regulation. I'm assuming you're talking about the Brevard squirrels. That is correct. Uh, they're, they're, they're not excluded from this, nor are they excluded from the uh, current gray squirrel season as it exists now. Is there any possibility to, to have those excluded from this regulation? We'll take that under advisement. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate the good work you do. Thank you. Buck Hoover. Uh, I'm here. Yes, this has to do with H2. I understand you guys are concerned about, well, considering they eat eggs, and we have several turtles that are not doing so well. My places are coming back up from what I've seen, except for a few. But would it be better to do a permit system so we can have responsible owners own them, but we keep it out of the bad people's hands? Thank you. We will take that into consideration, Buck. Edward Rogers. I was uh, going to say about H5. Uh, I'm assuming that would, would all counties from like Haywood and Transylvania County West, would they all have one week of uh, either sex black powder because it says to remove the line difference uh that there is now but then i'm kind of confused and i would be against a full week of no days in any of those counties uh, right now and 
Uh, I'd also like to see for H6, the squirrel season be open to public land also would be my suggestion. The, the, the either sex seasons for black powder will, will be, will match what the either sex season is for the current general firearm season. So if there is no current general firearm season, either sex day, there will be one day of either sex. If it's in the introductory, there will be six days. And if it's in any, any of the others, it will be the full black powder season. So that's how that will work. Okay. It's, it's well, not I, uniform across. Right. It depends on the County. Right. Okay. So I guess my comment would be, I'm against a full week for uh, black powder, either sex season. I would like to keep it at one day. Thank you. Thank you. Rob Christian. Hello all, thank you for uh, hearing the public comment on these issues. We appreciate your time and I'll try and keep it brief. Uh, my name is Rob Christian. I am a reptile keeper and reptile lover. Uh, this is gonna be my sixth state that I've sat in on. Um, I just recently moved to North Carolina. So I do uh, speak as a constituent and someone who these rules could potentially affect. Um, I just wanted to say that I feel like uh, not enough thought was put into these regulation change was changes when it comes to the tegu ban. Uh, a lot of these tegu species do not pose a uh, threat to being invasive in the state of New, uh, North Carolina. And uh, if it's not based on science, if you haven't done an ecological survey on the ability of these animals to become invasive here, uh, you're banning things based on fear and uh, hysteria and not on facts. And that is a very slippery slope that I don't think that the state of North Carolina uh, wants to kind of stand on. Uh, South Carolina just recently banned tegus and it affected quite a few people. Um, I know that North Carolina and South Carolina are watching each other regulatory wise and uh, watching what each other does. But I'm hoping that uh, with this public comment, you can see uh, the people who will be affected by this. Uh, we are trying to organize and make sure that we can uh, provide you with uh, adequate information to help you with making these decisions. Um, also, in regards to the importation permits, uh, I don't think that uh, the full scope of how these permits will affect the number of people who keep and breed things like corn snakes and rat snakes in the state of North Carolina, uh, how uh, deeply it's going to affect those people. Um, I'm hoping that some other people will get on here as well, since I'm trying to keep it short, keep it under that two minute mark, um, that these things are going to impact a lot of people. We're hoping that we can work with you on these sort of things and uh, make sure that the regulations are based on science and fact. And we are more than happy to work with you in any way I can provide my contact information personally so that I, you can reach out to me whenever you'd like. Um, but I'm hoping that uh, with hearing more, you know, rational, reasonable, reasonable um, explanations, you all can uh, work with us and come to a little bit Thank better you. regulation wording. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Samuel Bevington. Hi, I had a clarification que question um, on H3. Is it for uh, four reptiles per address or is it four native reptiles per address for ownership? That's all. That, that's, those are native, both rep, native reptiles and amphibians. Okay, thank you very much. Mm. Chris Salisbury. Yes, hello? We can hear you. Okay, just making sure. Seemed like a lot of people lost audio. Um, as Rob and I think it was Josh touched base, scientifically, there's really no possibility of any of the Tegu populations being invasive to North Carolina. Our temperatures drop too low during the winter. Um, anything that went into hibernation would never wake up from it. They typically can't survive anything lower than 45 degrees more than a day or two. Um, so I'm just wondering how you guys came up with the ban for tegus. And then also wanted to touch base on the, I guess it'd be H3 and H4. Scientifically, the Eastern rat snake is both commonly the black, the yellow, the greenish, and oh, I was Everglades. How would you determine which ones need a permit and which ones don't? 
as far as I know, the black one's the only one native to North Carolina. We'll take that into, we will take that into consideration. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Chris Page. Chris Page, you are unmuted. Jack Messick. Jack Messick. Yes, hello. Hi, we can hear you. Okay. Hi, I would like to address my proposal to uh, H2. Um, tegus, there, as stated before, there really is no evidence to suggest that they can become an invasive species due to our colder climate in the wintertime, um, as well as an proposal to H4, um, as there are, as it would affect hundreds, if not thousands of people's livelihoods who keep and breed uh, corn snakes and other rat snakes and other native species in this state. Thank you, Jack. And that is all. Emily Nelson. Chris Kane. Um, yes, thank you. I'd like to comment on proposal H5. I assume it also applies to game lands in the affected counties. And I don't think there's any biological justification as the proposal is written to increase uh, firearms either sex days on the Pisgah National Forest. And I would hope the commission would amend the proposal to exclude the Pisgah National Forest from the increase in black powder firearms, either sex days, because there's no biological justification for it while the deer populations are declining on the national forest. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Matt Rotzel. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hey, how's it going? I would like to speak on uh, H2, H3, and H4. Um, I am a North Carolina resident in the state of North Carolina, so this will affect me. Um, I am a longtime, lifelong reptile keeper. Um, the Teidu ban, like that everybody said before, just does not make sense. They cannot establish here. Also, with uh, the corn snake importations and bans on that, I truly believe that will do nothing but only hurt the wild population because if people cannot purchase captive born animals, they may go into the wilderness and try and catch wild species. Um, I just feel it will create more of a problem. I can understand a reasonable permit system, um, but I just hope that they're willing to actually take what everybody's saying into consideration because it's would be a, a shame to a lot of people in the state, especially current Teju owners. Um, I know most people don't understand, but a lot of people, these are like their kids and their puppies. If they, uh, if they lose them and told they can't keep them, people are gonna be pretty rough over it, in my opinion. Um, I would just like to let that go. Also on H5, I am an avid deer hunter and I would love Claire Groves. As a reminder, since we are ending the meeting at nine o'clock, I do ask that we keep anything to strict comments and no questions. Thank you. 
Claire Groves. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Perfect. Okay. Hi. So I recently moved from Utah to North Carolina, um, primarily because of the looser laws with reptiles. Um, and I came here to build a livelihood. And so when H2, H3, and H4 coming in, um, that that causes me to not be able to have my livelihood. My livelihood are these animals, you know, and being um, not able to keep tegus, not based off of any scientifics, but purely fear is asinine in my opinion. Um, and then when we start talking about H3 and H4, um, just because you make it so that people aren't can't import corn snakes doesn't mean that they aren't like um, someone you said before that they aren't going to collect the corn snakes. Our, our captive bred corn snakes or rat snakes um, or even turtles are not affecting the native populations. I'm not out there releasing you know, my corn snake that has five different genetics that will cost me, you know, a good several hundred dollars into the wild. Like no one is doing that, you know, and I know that there have ha things that have happened in Florida or, you know, in some of those warmer places, but that's, that's not happening here. And um, to cause, sorry, to have a system that makes it so that we cannot keep those, um, it, it's just, it doesn't make sense. As a lot of my peers have said, none of this makes sense. There is no scientific backing to any of this. And you're just going with your gut reaction, this quick reaction, and it's, it does, <laughs> it's not correct. And as you can tell, I oppose all three of them. Hello, can you guys hear me? Hello? We can hear you. Oh, perfect. Uh, my name is Michael Edelin. I am a resident here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I run Cold Blooded and Bazaar, which is a reptile pet store and Reptile Rescue. Uh, as several other members have mentioned, uh, one of the first things that reading through H2, H3, and H4, uh, the, the general species, Salvatore species, uh, it's an all-inclusive ban that is being suggested. And as they have stated, uh, many of those species, there is no chance of them ever uh, becoming invasive in the state of North Carolina. And then the one that's debatable, it still, uh, still gets too cold here as it will be tonight and as it, as it has been for the past couple weeks where uh, those species would not have a chance to survive and become invasive. Um, H3 and H4, um, one of the things that we try to focus on is obviously not letting invasive species or letting animals go into the wild, um, which is where it all begins. And then once you start getting into the permits or banning possible importation of things like corn snakes, which have been commonly caught as, uh, or com commonly kept as pets for the past several decades, many people rely on, um, their breeding and whatnot uh, to keep uh, happy, healthy animals in the state of North Carolina. And that seems like it might cause a whole lot of extra paperwork and uh, red tape that can ultimately affect thousands of people's lives. So with that being said, I, I would say that I'm opposed to H2, H3, and H4. Thank you for your comment. It would be helpful for all of us here if you would state whether or not you agree or disagree with a specific proposal. Thank you. Derek Hoover. 
Hi, thank you. Um, this is in regards to H2 in specific. I'm not in North Carolina, but I am an Argentine black and white tegu keeper. Um, we actually got ours from Mr. Ortiz and all the information you've been given. Obviously, you guys are going to need to evaluate it because, again, none of these species should be a problem for you guys. I just my point is today, I hope that whatever you guys decision is that you use the science. And ultimately, I've tried to and they had very poor conversations with the state of Georgia in regard to their handling because they are just slaughtering these animals. They're doing nothing as far as trying to do anything positive with them other than allowing people to club them and cut their heads off in the field. And this, this violent nature towards these animals is unnecessary. Where I live, I don't have a dog. My Tegu is my dog and he's the most loving thing you could ever ask for. I know you guys aren't questioning the love of these animals, but the process, let's not do what Florida's done and completely blow our wad and act like everything is just evil in the world. It's not reptile keepers causing the problem, but it is a problem and I can appreciate that. But there are responsible ways to handle this and not just blanket banishments of animals for no reason other than the state before said, and I'm not a, I, I get the North Carolina, South Carolina connection. You guys have to work together. I completely agree with that. But again, there's a science to this that has to be followed more than just, well, let's just do it and see what happens. So I thank you guys for your time. And I just implore you to whatever measures you take, make sure it does not involve the slaughtering of these animals because they don't deserve it. And it's not their fault. Most of these animals could either be taken in by people, can be used for learning, could be used for a lot of things other than just cutting their heads off and taking pictures and posting them like it's thank cute you. because thank it's not. Thank so you I thank you for your time. Nicole Spencer. Hello. We can hear you. Okay. Um, yes, I'm Nicole Spencer. I run Fresh Dart Rescue. Um, I am opposed to H2, the Tegu ban. Um, I just wonder if anybody has taken into account, like some of the people have mentioned, that these are our pets. Um, Tegus will last, live up to 20 years or more. We get attached to these more than some people get attached to their dogs. Um, Will there be any sort of permit for current owners, grandfathering in, um, you know, banning an animal and not giving people a place to send their animal? Th th just there having is, a blanket there ban is. is there I'm is sorry? a grandfather clause in there. So if you if you currently possess one, you 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 won't have to get rid of it. This will just ban the importation and sell of them. You you. you so anybody that currently possesses one will continue to possess them. Okay, but you're banning the sale of them in North Carolina so nobody can get another one? Correct. Thank you, for your, thank you for your comment, Nicole. Amanda Rocker. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hello, um, I just wanted to uh, address my opposal to H2, H3, and H4. Um, I am a zookeeper, a master herpetologist, and I also teach about reptiles in the college setting. Um, and I believe that the ban on tegus, um, it's a non-issue. These guys cannot survive our winters here in North Carolina. And I'm wondering if this is a knee-jerk reaction um, to kind of fall in line with South Carolina and Florida. Um, we are not South Carolina. We are not Florida. We do not need to do, uh, ban these guys. Like people are saying already, these are people's pets and they are their livelihoods. Um, it doesn't make sense. Um, it's, it's pretty obvious from these, uh, from how this is written that professionals were not addressed when making these proposals. Um, and as far as importation of possession goes, um, all you'll be doing is harming responsible keepers and breeders and not solving any actual issues. Education is always the key with these guys, with any of these reptiles, not banning. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Phil Bradley. Phil Bradley, you are unmuted. Matthew Holton. Can you hear me? 
Yes. Okay. Hey, my name is Matthew Holton. I just want to thank the committee and staff for allowing me to speak. I oppose H2, H3, and H4. <clears throat> As stated earlier, tegus cannot survive in the state. Even if they could, it'd only be one to two percent, <clears throat> and that'd be the only black tegu. As far as um, importation of uh, common reptile species in the state, I do not think that's necessary. It will, <clears throat> like stated earlier, prohibit many people from uh, continuing doing their jobs and following their dreams. <clears throat> my, uh, my goal in life is to uh, have one of the best zoos. I've been in North Carolina here, I'm resident my whole life, and I'd hate to have to relocate or not be able to show a beautiful animal because of these laws. Thank you. Thank you. Bill Bradley. Bill Bradley. Natalie Boyer. Fatigue, Chris. Can you hear me? We can. Um, so I am here to in opposition of H2, H3, and H4, um, and I'd like to directly address the tegu ban in H2. Uh, so I don't want to go over the temperatures. Everybody's already covered that. But if we look at South Carolina and Georgia, they are further south than we are. Uh, they're not quite as big of states as we are. We have a much broader temperature range. Um, maybe down towards the coast, the tegus could survive through the winter if they were lucky. But even our coast sees snow sometimes and any temperatures that we're getting where we're getting snow, then it's been cold enough where it'll stick and they won't survive through that. The mountain areas, we have mountain areas that South Carolina doesn't have. So we have colder temperature ranges than either of those states. So yes, they're banning them, they're having invasion problems, but that doesn't necessarily mean that our state will. Um, also, the I don't understand um, why we're grouping all of the tegus together as uh, one species. They're from different locales, different areas. Um, they're they're different animals. Um, I I feel like if we are going to go through with some type of ban, that we should do a little bit more research into the different species that these are, and um, maybe not blanket all tegus under the same thing. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your comment. Thank you everyone who has commented so far. Due to time constraints, we are going to move on. If you would like to make a further comment, you can do so online on our website or send an email and all of that information will be at the end of this presentation. I'm going to hand it over to Brad Howard to give further clarification. I do wanna make one clarification from a number of the different comments. H4 does not prohibit the importation of native amphibian and reptiles. It just requires an importation permit, which makes them consistent with native mammals and birds. All individuals will, st will still be legally allowed to import those species. They'll just need to get the permit from WRC's permit office. Just wanted to make that clarification so we knew this wasn't an importation ban for the native species, just, just the requirement of having a permit for those. Thank you, Brad. So next, we're going to hear from Darren Barnes with proposed changes to game land regulations. Darren Barnes, program manager of the Office of Wildlife Interactions and Regulated Activity Permits. Today, I'll be covering the proposed changes to regulated activities regulations. The following changes to regulated activities regulations are proposed by the North Carolina Wildlife Resource Commission and are offered for your comments, opinions, and suggestions. R1 clarifies that nine banded armadillos cannot be rehabilitated and upland game bird egg rehabilitation is prohibited. Our justification is that nine banded armadillos are a non-native species to North Carolina and prohibiting their rehabilitation puts them in line with other non-native species that are prohibited to be rehabilitated. Rehabilitation of eggs is not considered appropriate as chicks hatched in captivity will likely become imprinted to humans, making them challenging to release back into the wild. R2 makes collection licenses, captivity licenses, 
dealer licenses, possession permits, exportation or importation permits, trophy wildlife sale permits, endangered species permits, and field trial permits non-refundable. It makes both the unified sportsman and lifetime sportsman licenses half off for individuals ages 50 to 69. It adds controlled hunting preserve rabbit operator licenses for $25. Our justification is that the license and permits fees help defer the cost of processing applications and conducting license and permit inspections. It is important the commission retain these fees regardless of circumstances, which may include denial of an application or failure of the applicant to complete the application process. Legislation was passed at the General Assembly in September of 2021, making adult resident lifetime sportsmen and resident adult lifetime unified sportsmen coastal recreation fishing licenses half off for individuals age 50 to 69 and added the controlled hunting preserve operator license for rabbits for a fee of $25. Thank you, Darren. Before I open the floor for comments on the regulated activities proposals, please remember that if you wish to speak, you will need to raise your hand using the raise hand function on your computer or smartphone or star nine if you're calling in on your phone. When I call your name, you will be unmuted and will receive a prompt to unmute yourself and then you can make your comment. Please remember to keep your comments no more than two minutes. Sarah Hoots. Sarah Hoots. All right, looking like there are no comments on regulated activities, I'm going to hand it off to Brian McRae, and he will be going over our game land proposals. Good evening. I'm Brian McRae with the uh, Land and Water Access Division, and today I'll be talking about the proposed changes for game lands and bear sanctuaries for the 2022-2023 season. These proposals begin with G1. G1 will make temporary changes to 10D.0103 permanent and move specific game lands to their own rules. G2 will update NCAC language to include Sundays between season transitions as an allowable day to hunt and make it consistent with the adopted rule change allowing Sunday hunting on Buffalo Cove and South Mountains game land. G3 will prohibit alcohol and fires on the Lutes Track and Wilson Creek portions of Pisgah game lands. G4 will remove language regarding entry into posted waterfowl impoundments and clarify the use and construction of permanent hunting blinds on Johns River game land. G5 will prohibit target shooting on Buffalo Cove, DuPont State Forest, Green River, South Mountains, John River, and Pisgah WRC game lands. G6 will add a 2,300 acre property in Wilkes and Caldwell counties owned by the North Carolina Department of Agriculture to the game lands program. Name this property Kings Creek game land. Establish this game land as a six day per week area. Establish the Western Deer Zone season establish an introductory either sex season. G7 will restrict camping at designated camping areas on South Mountains game land to September 1 through the last day of February and March 31 through May 14 and limit the maximum number of consecutive days stayed at a designated campsite to 14 days. G8 will allow hunting and trapping on Johns River Waterfowl Refuge. G9 will add a scouting only zone at the Spring Creek impoundment on Goose Creek game land and limit all activities at this impoundment except waterfowl hunting and trapping to within this area during the period of November 1 through March 15. G10 will clarify that any organized activities or events at commission owned or managed building access areas will require a permit. G11 will clarify that fishing is the only allowable use of a public fishing areas unless otherwise posted. G12 will create a designated camping area on Jordan game land to allow hunter camping during the open hunting seasons. Camping will be restricted to September 1, the last day of February and March 31 through May 14. 
The last proposal this evening is G13, which will allow permit hunt opportunities on Panther Town, Bonus Defeat, Pisgah, and Standing Indian Bear Sanctuaries in the Mountain Bear Management Unit. Thank you, and that is our proposals for this evening. Thank you, Brian. Before I open the floor for comments on the game land proposals, please remember that if you wish to speak, you will need to raise your hand using the raise hand function on your computer or smartphone, or star nine if you're calling in on your phone. When I call your name, you will be unmuted and will receive a prompt to unmute yourself, then you can make your comment. Please remember to keep your comments no more than two minutes. As a reminder, please try to keep your comments to whether you agree or disagree with a proposal. Edward Rogers. Uh, yes, I wanna say I agree with the uh, G13 to open the bear sanctuary up for permit hunting as somebody that hunts the area regularly during deer season. Um, you notice when you see more bears and deer that uh, it might be time for a change. Thank you. Thank you, Edward. Adam Sogolski. Can you hear me? We can. Okay, great. Um, I'm against uh, opening up the G13. I think, you know, these were put in place against Bear Sanctuary and with uh, habitat loss happening and hu human populations coming in these areas. These areas were designated to get bears like a chance to be bears without being hunted. And I'll end my comment there, but I'm completely against G13 opening these up. Thank you, Adam. Victoria Lyle. Hi, can you hear me? We can. Hi, I am a North Carolina resident of Buncombe County and I am speaking up to object to the hunting of bears in sanctuary territory under G13. It was mentioned several times in the presentation that part of the reason for doing this is that there's a loss of huntable lands due to development and fragmentation. And you need to remember that every single bit of that loss of huntable lands is also a loss of bear habitat. So the bears are having the same pressure that the hunters are having. And that increase that that fragmentation and loss of habitat is is another reason why we're having increasing bear human contact. We should concentrate on teaching humans how to live with bears and not just respond by killing the bears because their habitat has been lost. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria. Gretchen Stallworth. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm opposed to proposal G13. Uh, bears do need a sanctuary. They need a safe place where they can reproduce, live their lives as bears, as God has intended. Uh, I don't think it's fair to make them pay the price for human development. That's a decision that people make. Thank you. Thank you, Gretchen. Phone number ending in 4334. Phone number ending in 4334. Hi, um, my name is Natasha. Um, despite the accident, I am a resident of North Carolina, have been for many years, and I disagree vehemently with G13. Um, unfortunately, number 13 appears to be unlucky for the bears on this occasion for opening up three further bear sanctuaries under the guise of population management. Um, I think that this solution is not measured enough and will not adjust, most importantly, the behavior of humans, which account for most issues when it comes to us living alongside these creatures. A sanctuary, as we know, is a place that provides safety or protection, and it should not be interchangeable with profit. I'd like to know how much money the Wildlife Resource um, Commission will actually be making from this if you open up further permits for bear hunters. Secondly, um, wildlife is a public resource and government has a role of managing that on our behalf. I would like you to see you pursue the services of independent agencies other than the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, for you to consult with regarding bear population management. It also sickens me to think of bear hunters being admitted into a sanctuary, particularly those who hunt and bait with dogs. 
As a final point, I would love to see more diversity on your team, and I'd love to see more women and people of color just basically representing the folks of Buncombe County and Western North Carolina. Thank you. Those are my comments for this evening. Thank you, Natasha. Alex McCauley. Can you guys hear me? You can. All right. Um, I'll be real quick because I know we passed it. I'm just asking that the committee considers a follow-up meeting or a specific hearing in relation to H2, H3, and H4. There seem to be a lot of public comments and people like myself who did not get to speak. Um, and I, as far as those go, do oppose those. So I'm just asking you guys to consider a follow-up meeting or a place for us to get to spend more time on this besides at 8.15 p.m. Thank you. We will consider that. Thank you, Alex. Alex Williams. Yes, I just wanted to say that I'm against um, H13 opening the uh, sanctuary lands to bear hunting. <clears throat> In the beginning of the proposal of Colleen, um, it was mentioned a lot of statistics saying that people wanted this and wanted bears managed this way, but all those statistics were from 2005. This is 16 years later. Your organization only was tied to hunters in 2005, but now you have the voice and the feelings of many people who watch and enjoy animals and bears and want them protected in these sanctuaries. In Colleen's original presentation at the beginning of this, she admitted that black bears were almost decimated the extinct extinction in Western North Carolina because because of poaching and hunting, and yet it's these sanctuaries, which in a large part help revitalize and bring back this population. So why would you reverse roles and go back to using death to manage wildlife? I also wanna challenge the commission and the head of NCWRC in this meeting to meet with the heads of Help Asheville Bears and the heads of Poacher Strike Force so that we can reveal to you all of our poaching investigations in the Blue Ridge and Smoky Mountains, which is out of control, including poachers killing over 60 bears a year. And yet your own organization trying to deny from the top that poaching is going on. So we would like to become before your committee and before the commission and give all the information. John Atkin. Yeah, hi, uh, I would just like to voice my strong support for G13 um, as a long time, lifetime North Carolina resident. I'm just happy to see more opportunities now that we've seen uh, great recovery of these bears uh, and just uh, looking forward to more opportunities to uh, get out with them. Thank you. Thank you, John. John viewed it. Yes, I, I just want to say I'm opposed to G13. I, I am basically a professional volunteer and work on four different trail crews working on hiking trails. And on all of those crews, there's not a single bear hunter that I know of, but everybody on those crews hikes. We all go to these places and we hike, we go there to see the nature. Uh, and we we're well aware that there's thousands and thousands of acres of public land open to hunting. And these sanctuaries are where we go during bear season to get away from the hunting. It's ridiculous in my mind to open these last few places where we can go and escape all the chaos of the hunting season and hike and see nature and you actually take those away from us. It's crazy. I just totally opposed to that. Thank you. Thank you, John. Denise Brooker. Hello. Um, I want to voice my opposition to G13. Um, on a number of different things. I'm not really a big fan of bear hunting, but particularly the use of dogs. Dogs have ruined more than I can count my trips in the wilderness. Um, I go to these sanctuaries specifically because they don't have dogs running through the habitat. Um, Panther Town in particular has a very diverse ecosystem. And um, despite what they say, the dogs get into everything, the nests, the, the, the burrows, everything. and um, uh, bear hunting with dogs, I oppose. I oppose hunting in the sanctuary. I mean, the data, like somebody said, is uh, it's 15 years old. Um, it's out of date. 
I, I don't expect it. Thank you, Travis Baird. Hey, um, can you guys hear me? You can. I wanted to for allowing. I wanted to voice my strong opposition to G13. Uh, there's been some wonderful comments already, uh, but you know, in short, if this is a bear sanctuary, then allowing hunters on it, it is now no longer a bear sanctuary. It needs to be a place of refuge, uh, a place for nature, uh, you know, to exist as it should for the bears. Um, so uh, strong opposition to G13. Thank you. Thank you, Travis. Chris Page. Hi, uh, as Travis mentioned, there's really no reason, uh, there, there's no point to a bear sanctuary that you can hunt in. Uh, although I know that there's a population issue, please remember that the population issue really resides with humans, not with bears. Um, the fact that there's more bears out on the coast now than there are in, out west in the mountains really begs to uh, begs the question, you know, what's going wrong? So if you guys go through with G13, at least use the money to uh, acquire more lands, acquire some corridors, and things like this to boost that bear population back to where it should be and also secure the trash and uh, keep people from being, I know it's hard, but from being idiots. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Abby Frazier. Hello, this is Finley Fraser. Um, I'd like to first off say that I'm absolutely opposed to uh, G13. Um, the use of dogs to hunt bears in Panther Town uh, will create a, a much bigger issue in terms of safety. Uh, you have a lot of people that recreate in the Panther Town National uh, in the Panther Town uh, Forest. It lies between Lake Toxaway and Cashers, uh, North Carolina, as you know. Um, those are both heavy uh, tourist areas. There are tons of hikers in that area uh, all throughout the year. So allowing the use of dogs to chase bears um, into uh, areas with humans is, is asking for safety issues. Uh, number two, the latest survey of public opinion being done in 2005, um, that's laughable that you would use that. If I submitted anything from an environmental report to a state or federal agency and didn't have um, dates within the last three years, they would return it to me. So you should not uh, go with that data. Opinion has significantly changed since 2005. The last I would like to say is that um, an observation is not an encounter. Um, when you talk about encounters and the increase in encounters, that is also um, using observations. And I would say that um, since 2005, yeah, about it's been, 20 seconds left, Finley. It's been much easier to record observations through the use of cell phones and internet. Um, so I think you need to dig into that data and actually see what is a, uh, a harmful encounter, not an, uh, not an observation. Thank you. Thank you. Angela Martin. Angela Martin. Anita Gifford. Can you hear me? We can. Hello. Okay. okay. Um, I live in Laurel Falls, which has a border with the western edge of Panther Town, a very long border. Um, I've owned my house in here for 20 years. I'm currently a North Carolina resident, have been living here full time for five years. And I question whatever population data you've received about Panther Town, because in the last 12 months, I've seen one bear that came to my house three times, probably be, 
because there was probably some food left out there, which is my fault, not his. And I've only seen two bears in the last 12 months on the roads between Panther Town and Cashers. And I ride horses in Panther Town, and I've been doing that for 20 years, and I hike in Panther Town, and I have never seen a bear on horseback or hiking in those last 20 years. So I really, really question any data that you have, and I would love to see it if you would post it on your website. And I would also love to know who at Nantahala US Forest Service is the one recommending bear hunting in Panther Town so we can all have a chat with that person. And last, I would ask for the phone number that we should be calling once all the bear hunters and their dogs are trespassing in our development whenever they start hunting in Panther Town because we'll need that phone number on speed dial so that we can call you to take care of that. Thank you. Thank you. Robin Walker. Hello, I'm speaking tonight uh, as a staff member on behalf of Camp Marywood in opposition to GS 13. Marywood has been operating as a residential summer camp for girls for the last 104 years and we own about 450 acres of land in very close proximity to Panther Town. Our campers and staff are recreational users of Panther Town Valley and have been since the 1920s. And we would like the Panther Town bonus defeat area to be kept free of bear hunting. We support the position of Friends of Panther Town and the measures that Friends of Panther Town and the Forest Service have been taking to reduce human bear interactions and encourage increased education of the local residents and the visitors on steps that they can take to minimize attracting bears to residential areas and campsites. Thank you very much. Thank you. Brandon Jones. Hey y'all, thanks for taking my call, I appreciate it. Um, as a, as a uh, resident of Henderson County, Hendersonville, North Carolina, um, and, a, and a avid, avid hunter, um, I am vehemently opposed to uh, 13 bear hunting on sanctuary land. Um, you guys, I'm sure, I'm sure you guys are well aware of the foot trapping and the, and the snares, which I should be outlawed and should be illegal. Uh, not only because bears get in them, but people's pets. Um, I mean, people actually have gotten, uh, you know, have seen these traps and these snares. So, you know, in my opinion, bears are sentient beings. And I think, uh, you know, harvesting them uh, for population control, if, if that's what you guys are going to use, uh, if we if we could see as a as a public see that data, uh, but I can tell you I see a lot of, a lot of dead bear on the roads being hit on I forty because there's no sanctuary bridge that they have, the wildlife bridge that they can either go underneath or over, um, so I, I'm seeing more dead bear on the roads than I am anywhere. Um, up here we still have bear. And, and they are wonderful creatures to see. And I think it just comes down to training people, um, training the public on how not to attract them, not feed them, things of that nature uh, that poses a, a, could pot potentially pose a threat to somebody. Uh, but I am absolutely against um, hunting bear on sanctuary land. Thanks for taking my call. Thank you. Heidi Mahaffey. Good evening, my name is Heidi Mahaffey. I'm an animal law attorney in North Carolina. I am opposed to G13. Um, I'm also an attorney in Florida and I opposed the bear hunt in Florida uh, a few years back. Um, it did go forward and it resulted in the quota being met in just a few hours of the hunt being opened and hunters weren't unable to be reached to cease the hunt resulting in an overkill and detrimental impact on the species. Um, here, there's a lot of issues with this bear hunt proposal being on sanctuary land. Uh, the first being that the data is stale 2005 survey for approval of hunting does not reflect the current population um, and idea about whether or not this is appropriate or ethical. Um, it seems like the current level of population is based off of a 2012 study. Um, there's inadequate data on the current bear population to be able to determine the effects of additional hunting. Um, there's other open questions about what this bear hunt would do um, if there is a quota if there's a limited number of bears per the permit? Um, will more permits be sold than the anticipated bears to be killed? Is there a method for early termination of the hunt? Things of this nature that need to be considered before any proposal moves forward. Also, there's no meaningful way to enforce the hunt rules in place, including limiting the bears per hunter, no killing of female bears with cubs, and no killing of bears less than 75 pounds. 
It's very difficult to gauge the weight of bears unless someone's an experienced hunter. Studies have shown that bear hunting does not reduce human bear conflict as the hunting takes place in the interior of a habitat away from human population. The focus needs to be on the nuisance bears that are drawn to the outskirts of the habitat where there's access to food. Educate the people, don't put it all on the bears. Thank you. Thank you. Tyler Ross. Oh. Can y'all hear me? We can. Well, anyway, my name is Tyler Ross. I'm the vice chair for North Carolina Backcountry. Okay, right on. I'm the. We would like to speak in. Um, thank you for all y'all do, and we appreciate it. Thank you, Gillian Kerner. Hi, yes, my name is Jillian. Um, I'm a resident of Buncombe County. I used to be a wilderness therapist guide. And so I am a avid fan of LNT and I uh, vehemently oppose G13. This proposal seems like a band-aid short-term quote solution to the real problem here, which is human management and tourists coming in and not knowing how to practice proper bear safe etiquette. And I would, I'm happy that my peers today have brought up that 2005 survey that uh, has been informing this proposal because it did say that 12,000 12, surveys were sent out and only 4,000 were rece received back for public input on that idea. So not only is the data just from 2005, but only a fourth of those people selected share their thoughts and thoughts definitely differ now in 2022. I would implore the commission to instead focus their efforts on public awareness campaigns that involve partnerships of local, state, and federal agencies with conservation groups and universities. I would also implore the commission to look at installing cables in Pisgah National Forest for bear hangs that, um, that the Gray Smokies have. Um, I think that there's a better way to focus on this issue than going straight to allowing more hunting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Michael Wilkins. Michael Wilkins. Yes, can you hear me now? We can. Oh, thank you. Um, uh, appreciate the com a chance to comment. Uh, I've been a professional forester for over 43 years. Uh, I fully support G13. I spent my last 30 years managing the National uh, Nantahala Ranger District and retired in 2019. Some factual reasons. Uh, Panther Town Valley is overpopulated with bear. Its habitat uh, bears have become very aggressive due to the lack of hunting. Beginning in about 2014 or 15, I began to take calls about bears stealing backpacks, ripping tents, displaying no fear of people. During 2017 and 18, we received reports every couple of weeks all season long about aggressive bears. Even when campers hung their food out of reach of bears, they'd come through the camp, damage tents. They would have bears look at them from just the edge of the light of the fire ring all night long. Bears sometimes force hikers to drop backpacks in broad daylight. Uh, one report told me of bear working over a container till he cracked it. Uh, during 2018, that last full season, I worked four or five groups who had camped in Panther Town for years, several for decades advises. They just could no longer camp there for safety concerns. So as a former manager familiar with recreation risk and hazards to the public, I feel Panther Town should be open to, uh, to hunting. It's already open to every other kind of hunting, uh, much less frequent on the National Forest and Standing Indian. Uh, these sanctuaries uh, also have had problems almost every year on, on the trails when people are camping, not as much as Standing Indian. Um, the tremendous growth in the number of private low density neighborhoods. About 10 seconds left, Michael. Okay, uh, I would also then add just at the end that uh, the data shows it should be 
open to hunting and it's sort of a waste of taxpayer funds to still enforce a law that's no longer needed. And it's also a discouragement for law enforcement to spend time on things they know is- Thank, thank you, Michael. Thank you. J.A. Perry. Hello, yes, I am uh, opposed to G13, um, in particular bear hunting with dogs that might force the public safety issues onto public lands. Um, I am new to this issue as of today, but I really want to know if there have been alternatives considered such as expanding bear habitat. Uh, I think that there should be public lands that are safe from hunting uh, for hikers and so forth. And I do believe that the population problem that we're dealing with here is humans, not bears. Thank you. Thank you. Casilla Rivera. Hi, Fen. Yes, can you hear me? We can. Uh, just to remind people, the definition of sanctuary from Merriam-Webster Dictionary includes a place where someone or something is protected or given shelter, the protection that is provided by a safe place, a place of refuge and protection, a refuge for wildlife where predators are controlled and hunting is illegal. It seems to me that if bears are killed by hunters in areas designated as their sanctuaries, the hunters would be considered the predators, and we can no longer consider these areas as sanctuaries for bears. So I categorically, categorically object to G13 to simply maintain some levels of rational and moral consistency. Thank you. Thank you. Joe Duramo. Joe Duramo. Yes, this is Joanne DeRamo. Um, I have been a bear photographer for about a, over a dozen years now. I have never had any opposition from a bear, wild bears. Um, I feel that the issue that you have is the people interacting with them. The people need to be educated. Every time you see on the news that something has happened, uh, it's always been where there has been food left out, there's been food in their pocket, uh, the, the news stations and the newspapers have taken this and have stated other reasons for this than what you're saying with the overpopulation. Also with the Division of Forestry, the gentleman that just retired, I am interested if you have spoke with anyone else from uh, the forestry that may have retired that our bear enthusiasts, uh, Bill Lee, for instance, he has dealt with bears for over 40 years now. Thank he you, would know if we could keep our comments specifically to the proposal. Well, he would be able to give you information to help you with this instead of going out and taking a sanctuary and turning it into hunt, hunting land. Again, I have to agree with the last caller that a sanctuary is something that you all put in place for the bears and it should be kept that way. It shouldn't be turned into something for the hunters to be able to go out and use the dogs to kill the bears. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Chip Brown. Hi, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yes, I'm Chip Brown. I I'm a uh, full-time resident of Lake Coxaway. I live about three miles from the trailhead, Coal Mountain Road, and uh, I'm violently opposed against this G13 for many reasons, one of them being safety of our residents that live up on the rim, Hogback Mountain up atop of Coxaway over to a Sapphire area. There's friends of mine that live within 50 yards of the firing line and in sight of firing lines of hunters. And then Secondly, I've been hiking in Panther Town weekly for 24 years, and I have never once seen one bear in Panther Town in 24 years. So I am violently opposed. 
the population increase is not among the bears, it's among the people. And particularly the last two years with COVID, thousands of people have been in Panther Town and I've hiked those trails thousands of miles and I've never seen one bear. So I'm violently opposed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jody Williams. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I appreciate y'all doing this. And I wanna say I sincerely am opposed to G13. This is like said before, this is not a bear problem. This is a human population problem. Bears have their own population control built in because of food. It needs to be educated to the people about not feeding bears, pulling their bird feeders up. There's not any attacks happening and all the data that you were trying to push on the people is ancient. So it's, it's just, it's all just a sham. You already let people, the bear hunters bait the bear with food just on the edge of the sanctuaries and those bears come out of the sanctuaries and then they're shot. So this, this proposal is just absolutely ridiculous. And that's my opinion. Thank you, Shannon Falls. Hey there, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I moved to um, two miles from Panther Town about seven years ago. And I moved there strictly because there was a bear sanctuary because I wanted to be near nature and I wanted to be near the bears. I'm an avid hiker. I have lived there and I've had no bear altercations whatsoever. We, I think we have a people problem as people have said and not a bear problem. This sanctuary is like was said before, a sanctuary for these bears to be protected and safe. And it breaks my heart to think that we're just going to kill them because the people are the ones that are making the mistakes and not the bears. So that's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Michael Williams. Hi, can you hear me? We can. I, I'm a, I just want to say I'm opposed to um, G13. And like me, others have said, the, the, the definition of sanctuary alone should be self-explaining. And I believe, as others have said also, it's a people problem, not a bear problem. And I'm just opposed to uh, G13. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Hummel. Hey folks, first, uh, thanks so much for the opportunity to participate in the regulatory management of our wildlife. Uh, I wanted to voice my support of G13. Uh, as was stated, uh, bears have been recovered for a while now. And if that population data is accurate, a regulated permit hunt is a productive means of balancing an ecosystem and increasing the quality of the habitat that may be saturated uh, beyond the carrying capacity for any particular species. Hunting in the North American model for conservation has long demonstrated that when executed properly, it's overwhelmingly to the benefit of the game species nearly in perpetuity. If bear permitted to be harvested in the interior uh, at the center of their populations, that's gonna create less problems or less competition for the bears. that will be forced to move beyond the edges of undeveloped habitat. And simply you won't see them getting hit by cars on I-40 if there's less competition uh, at the center of their ranges. Thanks so much for what you guys do. Thank you. Phone number ending in 6631. That's 6631. Hi, can you hear me? You can. Okay. Um, I am opposed to G13. Um, a lot of people have brought up um, very good arguments as to why they're against it. Um, I think your proposal should reflect the sentiments and the views of the people which you serve. Um, so that's reason number one, um, I oppose my taxpayer dollars to support anything to do with this. Um, and if the population is exploding as you stated, which I have my doubts, um, has sterilization or non-lethal methods of population control been explored and why or why not? Um, lastly, 
if you're going to allow hunting in sanctuaries, then I propose you change the name from sanctuary to hunting grounds. Out here. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph Thomas. Yanira Zelaya. Hi, I am a resident of Buncombe County and also a forest uh, health ecologist and I oppose G13 because the historical population range referred to as a metric in this proposal is not ac an accurate representation. It does not include other factors we're facing in our present time, such as an increase in interaction by in, in human, by urbanization and through climate change. And it's as simple as what president would we be, president would we be setting, making, san creating sanctuaries to then become um, hunting land. We should be focusing more on educating the community. Thank you, Gloria Fitzwater. Gloria Fitzwater. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, sorry. I am. I also am opposing G13 for the harvesting of bears in the sanctuaries. A lot of the same things other people have stated. There's just a lot of more questions I think that need to be answered. You know, will more males be allowed to be harvested than females since the females are the ones carrying the cubs that keep the population going? Um, and yes, bears are losing their habitat because of people, not their fault. You know, we can't help that more people move in and and we all know bears won't typically bother people they typically run from people unless somebody approaches a female with cubs you know there could be a problem but typically bears don't mess around with people you just don't hear of it very often and and let's face it like i said before the ground belonged to the bears before all the people moved in and another couple questions, will the sanctuaries be open year round and permanently? And will they be open during mating season when the sows are pregnant and have their cubs? Because that's horrible, absolutely horrible. I can't imagine somebody would be allowed to kill a sow when she's got two or three little babies that are gonna die because she's dead. You know, they're, they're just, I just don't believe in it. I don't think it's a good thing. I, God created the animals just like he created us, but it's their land. And when man starts messing with the ecosystem, things, things go wrong. I mean, that's proven they always have. Something ends up overpopulated or underpopulated. Yeah, so, about 20 seconds. Okay, thank you. So yes, I 100% I disagree with it because we just can't go out killing the sows, especially when they have cubs or any of the bears for that matter. I just think it's inhumane and Thank that's their you. sanctuary. Thank you. Leonard Rex. Yes, I'm a uh, hunter education instructor. I've been doing that for about 20 years. I wanna speak in support of G13. Um, regulated hunting has proven to be the most effective uh, conservation tool uh, in the United States. Uh, it has benefited the populations greatly when used wisely. I appreciate that the Wildlife Resources Commission uh, makes these kind of determinations based on uh, research and uh, science rather than on emotional responses. I agree with many of the people who said that we need education. Uh, quite apparently, many people uh, need some education regarding hunting because uh, they really do not understand uh, its, its legal use um, and its benefits. Thank you. Thank you. Stephanie Avilia. Hi, can you hear me? We can. Good afternoon to the commission. My name is Stephanie Avilia, and I'm a 14-year-old girl speaking to you from Washington. I'm here today in order to strongly oppose G13, the newly suggested opening of bear sanctuaries to hunting. Turning these sanctuaries into hunting grounds will defeat their shared purpose of protecting bears and neglect the real solutions to problems such as bear-human conflict. To replace a place of refuge and safety with one of death and killing defeats the shared purpose of any sanctuary. 
keep animals safe and protected. Sanctuaries like the Pisgah were established to protect bears from various wildlife endangerments, the most common of which is hunting. For over 50 years now, they have become a home to many bears across the state of North Carolina. And hunting them in their place of refuge, the place they call home, goes against the basis for creating these bear sanctuaries in the first place. Furthermore, hunting clearly does not resolve our conflicts and encounters with bears, but instead increases the potential of them happening. It's obvious that turning bear sanctuaries into hunting grounds is purely contradictory, unethical, and without reason. It's all wrong. Please make the right choice and don't allow the hunting of sanctuary animals. Let the sanctuaries do what they're meant to be doing and let the bears in nature continue to thrive just the way it should be. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Margaret Swearingen. Hi, thank you for giving me the chance to speak. I want to speak out in opposition to G13. I'll keep my comments brief, but I would like to know if fertility control methods of bear management have been considered. Several promising studies have been done on the efficacy of injectable immunocontraceptives in bears. And I think this should strongly be considered before we further open the hunting of animals who were here long before we were. Thank you. Thank you, Richard Weldon. Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Richard Weldon. I am a homeowner in a community that uh, abuts Panther Town Valley. And I would like to voice my opposition to G13, specifically to Panther Town Valley. Um, the unique aspects of Panther Town is what brought me and many others to Western North Carolina as a hiker, as a nature lover, and someone who loves being outdoors. And, and, and the uniqueness of Panther Town being advertised even as the Yosemite of the East. It would be a tragedy to have bear hunting in such a unique and special environment that brings out people of all kinds out to the outdoors to enjoy the Western North Carolina. So I would vehemently oppose uh, G13 as it stands specifically to Panther Town Valley and would uh, strongly urge this commission to at least pull Panther Town Valley out, out of its consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Robin Davis. I would like to speak in opposition to G13 as well. Um, so many great comments this evening. And just to, to recap a few of them, I think to consider opening up these sanctuaries because there has been a loss of huntable land is one of the worst reasons that I have heard. And I really believe that we need to protect sanctuaries for the animals, for nature, for humans who want to connect to nature, because I think that's one of the most important things that we need to learn is that we need to coexist. We are part of nature. It's not us versus nature. And it makes me really sad that humans are always trying to control other species. And what we need to do is learn to coexist. Thank you. Thank you, Linda Campbell. Linda Campbell. Yes, I'm here. Uh, my name is Linda Campbell. I'm a resident in Buncombe County. I uh, oppose G13 for a number of reasons, many of which have been stated. I study um, black bear behavior extensively. Um, they are arguably one of the most um, uh, intelligent animals that we have in North America. Their brains rival the higher primates. When they are hunted, it changes their personalities. Um, and it is not something that we should allow in a sanctuary uh, it's like shooting fish in a barrel to open our sanctuary lands that are specifically designed to protect these magnificent animals. I agree with bear education. I support bear wise. Um, any of the, the literature that's out there, I try to teach people about that. I live in an area in Candler where I regularly have six bears that um, come through our neighborhoods. In years, they have never bothered anyone. We can coexist. Um, we need to educate people about that, and we 
uh, don't need to go in and start killing these bears that um, that are very intelligent and that um, that have feelings and can change their behavior because of the hunting patterns. So I'm in opposition of it. And there are a number of reasons also. Um, people will come up with these hunting things that it's management. Uh, there are also studies that go against that. So I'm gonna oppose that as well. Thank you, Linda. As a reminder, we have about six minutes left until we have to wrap up. So please keep your comments as concise as possible. Elena Tillman. Yes, hi, uh, I think you can hear me at this at this point. Um, I want to echo everyone else's uh, sentiment, so I'll, I won't review those. There's just a couple that may or may not have been touched on thoroughly, so I'll just kind of uh, briefly uh, outline that. Um, one of them is that the proposed hunting season could also result in orphaned bear cubs, which is just to me c completely uh, reprehensible. Um, when the proposed season would prohibit the killing of cubs less than 75 pounds, I just say, while, while they would uh, prohibit the killing of uh, cubs less than 75 pounds and mothers with cubs, um, there's nothing prohibiting the killing of a mother whose cubs are not within eyesight. A hunter would have to have no way to know if, if the bear has cubs until it's too late. So again, I vehemently uh, oppose G13 for this reason, th this and many other reasons. Um, bears reproduce very slowly and are also highly susceptible to overkill. Um, this is not selective as much as folks would like to think it is, it is indiscriminate. Um, there's also no mention of a limit to the number of permits that would be handed out. So in my mind, allowing the, hunted, uh, the hunting of these bears on protected sanctuary land would violate our responsibility to conserve wildlife and also uphold the public trust. Um, as an avid uh, outdoors person and um, uh, wildlife uh, uh, lover of wildlife, I, this, you know, this, this to me is just not what North Carolina represents. Um, and as others have said, hunting bears does not make people safer, nor does it stop human bear conflicts. These are, as said, highly sentient beings, highly intelligent beings. They do have families and, uh, you know, th this is just not something that we should stand for. Um, thank you. Thank you. Richard Stalker. Richard Stocker. Dee Dee Dillingham. Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Okay, great. So I strongly oppose G13 for every single reason that everybody has mentioned. Um, I also, the, the sanctuaries are actually the animal's home and I consider us, the humans, as their guests. I also don't support killing animals in their own home, especially for trophy hunting. Um, nobody's brought up the fact of um, the dogs that are used. I did not know that until tonight. There's a rampant abuse problems of hunting dogs. That would be a different conversation, but I do want people to know how abused hunting dogs are. And um, I really like the wildlife corridor idea. And lastly, I was just wondering, I won't learn it here, but I'll try elsewhere to see if there are any repercussions for humans who create problems for the bears. Thank you. Thank you, David Sawyer. David Sawyer. Leah, oh, hear me now? Yes, we can. Uh, just want to make a couple couple points. You know, the Wildlife Commission was created by at the pressure of sportsmen due to loss of game species, and the bear sanctuaries were created due to the pressure of the sportsmen to try to bring back bears in North Carolina. And the other thing is, if you look at the map of the sanctuaries, those are the sanctuaries that. That the Wildlife Commission had created in the 70s, but there's many, many more sanctuaries, the park, um, Asheville Watershed, uh, every, every state park out there. And what's really been interesting to me is through my career um, is that the sanctuaries have 
kind of sw swap places um, more where there are more people and interspersed with some habitat, some species like bears seem to get along pretty well in that, in that situation. And some recent data to provide um, would be back in 2014 to 2018 the bear study that the commission worked with NC State on, there were 160 different bears captured um, in the city limits of Asheville and immediately adjacent to the city limits, just to give you an idea of the sort of the, the swapping of the, of the sanctuaries, which you know we would call pseudo sanctuaries. Anyway, those are just some points I wanted to make. I'm in favor of the proposal. Thank you, David. Thank you to everyone who has commented tonight. We appreciate your time. Thank you for everyone for participating in this important rulemaking process. We look forward to compiling your comments so that we can make the best decisions on how we regulate wildlife resources in North Carolina as we've done since 1947. As we celebrate 75 years of conservation of our state's wildlife resources in 2022, we look forward to getting outdoors and enjoying wildlife associated recreation. Please stay safe and be well. Thank you. Before we wrap up today, I would just like to remind everyone that we will be accepting comments on these proposed regulations through January 31st. Comments can be submitted online through our public comment portal, via email, or in writing, and all of this information can be found on our website at ncwildlife.org slash proposed regulations.